first test of a nuclear weapon was in the atmosphere on July 16, 1945, in a remote part of New Mexico on what was then the Alamogordo Bombing Range, and is now the White Sands Missile Range. The site is 55 miles northwest of Alamogordo, New Mexico. At various times between June 1946 and November 1962, atmospheric and underground tests were conducted by the United States in the Marshall Islands, Christmas Island, Johnson Atoll in the Pacific Ocean, and over the South Atlantic Ocean. Between January 1951 and July 1962, atmospheric and underground nuclear tests were conducted at the Nevada test site. Underground testing was conceived by Dr. Edward Teller, often referred to as the father of the hydrogen bomb. Richard Qualley described him as pure genius. Richard Qualley worked for E.J. Longyear Company in 1957 when it was awarded a contract by the Atomic Energy Commission to work on the underground tests. He headed the mining engineering phase of the underground testing project. Quali supervised 200 men at the Nevada test site, each of them with security clearance from the FBI. It was part of the Plowshare program, which was the application of nuclear explosives to develop peaceful uses for atomic energy. The shot, developed by the University of California's Livermore Laboratory under the code name of Rainier, was the 21st of the Plowshare test series and part of Operation Plum Bob. Operation Plum Bob consisted of nuclear weapons related, weapons effects and safety experiments conducted from May 1957 to October 1957. In sum, a nuclear device mounted at the top of a steel or wooden tower was exploded in the atmosphere. In others, a nuclear device suspended from a balloon was exploded into the atmosphere. Nuclear devices were exploded on the surface. There were rocket-propelled devices. Or a nuclear device was exploded at the bottom of a drilled or mined vertical hole. Finally, a nuclear device was exploded at the end of a long horizontal drift mined into a mountain or mesa in such a way that places the burst deep within the earth. Rainier used a 218-pound modified W25 warhead, a 1.8 kiloton device which is the equivalent of 1,800 tons of TNT. By comparison, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was 35 to 40 kilotons. Here are some pictures of a co-worker and Dick Qualley with the device. The nuclear device was placed in a room 6 by 6 by 7 feet at the end of a 1900 foot tunnel. The tunnel was some 900 feet below the surface of a mesa at the northern edge of the Yucca Basin in the Nevada test site. The tunnel was curved at the innermost end like a cane. After the explosive device was placed in the ground zero room, the room was sealed off with sandbags. Two steel barrier doors were placed 575 and 1,225 feet from the ground zero room. Scientists met at 10 p.m. the night before for a final technical evaluation of preparation on atomic device Rainier. Scientists around the world had been alerted that they might study the nuclear jolt for knowledge of natural earthquakes. By naming the foreseen factors, including longitude and latitude, the American scientists gave Tembler experts a once-in-a-lifetime chance to record the transmission of seismic waves as they affect the structure of the Earth from crust to core. As the hour of detonation approached, the work crews waited in anticipation at the observation point three or four miles from ground zero. When the device was exploded, shock waves rolled up the mesa, kicking up spurts of dust along the 7,500 foot mesa top and slope. Instruments showed immediately above the explosion point the ground rose about five inches and then subsided. Four fifths seconds after the blast, seismographs at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, 300 miles away, recorded it as an earthquake having an intensity of 5 on the Richter scale at the point of origin. That intensity is sufficient to damage buildings at its epicenter. 
There were numerous calculations based on atomic theory before the nuclear tests commenced. Qualley described those calculations as very accurate. After one explosion, they calculated how far down we could dig before we would contact radioactivity. The calculations were accurate to within two feet. Qualley was a firm believer in the use of nuclear devices for peaceful purposes. He thought that the public needed to be educated, that it was more dangerous to generate electricity from fossil fuels than from nuclear fuel. Qualley recalled that he never had any doubt about the underground testing program. It was the most fascinating thing he'd ever done. Later, after the radioactivity had decayed to manageable levels, Data was collected by drilling a tunnel into the explosion cavity. These post-explosion investigations provided scientists with an understanding of underground explosion phenomenology that remains virtually unchanged today and provides most of our understanding of underground nuclear explosions. The experiment was completely successful and the succeeding underground explosions were part of a development series. The success of the Rainier shot also helped build support for the Limited Test Ban Treaty of 1963, an international agreement which banned atmospheric nuclear weapons tests.